Hello aspirants welcome to UPSC World Current Affairs today is 15th March and today's topics are UPI 123 pay which was launched by RBA a new global center for traditional medicine by WHO Sahit Yotsav festival of literature festival of letters a side channels attack on IOT devices Sushma Swaraj award recently launched by Haryana government a new cricket laws has been introduced by Marlebon Cricket Club new uh, uh, report on education udise for the year 2020 2021 has been released the endurance it is a lost ship which wa which was found after 100 years of its disappearance national bank for financing infrastructure and development is now all indian financial uh, all indian financial uh, finance institution under rbi act national land monetization corporation so we'll discuss uh, today's topics now upi 123 pay recently uh, why it is in news uh, rbi has launched a new unified payment interface solution uh, for featured phones that is basic phones and doubled it as upi 123 pay and also rbi has released digi sati it is a 24 by 7 helpline to address queries of digital payments for users across different products so we'll discuss basic information about upi 123 pay it is a three step method to initiate execute services for users who will work on feature phones that is basic phone, uh, basic phones that is keypad phones it will allow customers to use basic keypad phones for all transactions except they cannot scan and pay this is the only exceptions they can use all different transactions on keypad phones it doesn't need any internet connection for transactions customer only condition is it, the customers have to link their bank accounts with the featured phone to use this facility so what are the four options how this system will work is uh, through interactive voice response through app based functionality through missed call facility through proximity sound based payments so first one it is a voice response a secured call from the featured phones to a predetermined IV or number and complete um, uh, call has to be made from the, uh, from that featured phone to predetermined IV or number and through that they should complete the UPI payment by uh, entering the UPI number and next one is app based functionality install an app on the featured phone and pay through that app but it cannot accept a scan and pay function and missed call fix facility a give uh, um, a number will be in the merchant outlet and they should give a missed call to that number and the customer will receive an incoming call to authenticate the transaction by entering UPI PIN. The proximity sound based payments uses sound waves to enable contactless offline and proximity data communication on any devices. So important points in this topic is it will allow um, ex for all transactions even scan and pay. No, it is it doesn't allow scan and pay functions. And uh, it, do need, do it need internet connection? No, it doesn't need internet connection. These two are important points, and these uh, these four are uh, through which it will function. These are also important points. Sahit Yotsav. Why it is in news? Uh, we'll discuss what is Sahit Yotsav and Sahiti Academy. So first of all, Sahit Yotsav is a festival of letters of Sahiti Academy. It will be held from 10th March to today, that is 15th March in New Delhi. So what is Sahit Yotsav? Uh, the basic information about this festival. It is India's most inclusive literature, literature festival. So it is all about literature. It is conducted by uh, by Sahiti Academy Awards. We'll discuss what is Sahiti Academy. It will uh, Sahiti Academy Award presents to 24 award winners. So the festival of Le uh, letters 2022 will be part of celebration to commemorate Ajati Ka Amrit Mahotsav, that is 75th anniversary of India's independence. And the exhibition will be conducted. The, the exhibition will showcase academy's achievements and seminal events held in the previous years so what is basic information about sahiti academy it is india's national academy for literature or letters uh, it is an organization dedicated to the promotion of literature in the languages of india in indian languages so it is founded in 1954 and it is located its office is located in rabindra bharat in delhi so it is supported by indian government of ministry of culture 
so it is it doesn't comes under ministry of culture as it is independent society as it is independent body it doesn't comes but uh, ministry of culture will support the academy so this is initially funded a uh, function under an executive order um, but substantially it registered as a society under indian societies registration act 1860 so important points in this topic or um, Uh, about sahitya academy uh, where is the sahitya academy located it is in new delhi uh, whether it comes under uh, government ministry of culture or not no it doesn't comes under ministry of culture it is an independent uh, uh, whether it is society or company or organization or something like that it is a society these are the important points in this topic side channels attack so what is side channels attack why it is in news recently indian researchers have built a low energy security chip to prevent side channels attacks on internet of things devices so what is internet of things we'll discuss in a moment first of all what is side channels attack side channels attack is any attack that is based on information gained from the implementation of computer system rather than weakness of algorithm that is software bugs are uh, generally uh, an attack will be based on algorithm or weakness in the algorithm like bugs in the algorithm but side channels attack will be an attack based on information gained from the implementation of the computers we will we'll see what are the what is that information so main aim is to extract sensitive information like cryptographic keys property machine learning models and parameters so uh, what kind of information how they will do by measuring things like timing information power consumption of the computer and electromagnetic leaks of the system so the side channels attacks is also known as sidebar attacks or implementation attacks as these are gained from the implementation of system but uh, side channels attack are difficult to detect and defend against it is very difficult to defend uh, defend against these kind of attacks so there are different uh, different types of seas these are timing attacks that means they uh, the attack will analyze the time used by the user of an computer like that uh, electromagnetic attack acoustics power consumption attacks optical attacks and memory cache attacks hardware weaknesses so we'll discuss what is internet of things now internet of things refers to a system of interrelated internet connected objects i'll try to explain with an example so that you can understand very easily these objects that are connect to that are able to connect and transfer data over a wireless networks without human interventions so uh, what are all connected to iot we can connect cars lights refrigerators and more appliances can be connected to the iot so real world examples are uh, voice assistant like siri alexa smart cars etc a wearable fitness and trackers uh, devices also so i'll try to explain what is internet of things when you are walking in a house uh, when you when you enter uh, your bedroom and uh, lights fans will automatically switch on and when you leave that room um, and the lights and fans will automatically switch off that kind of uh, technology is internet of things that means there is a sensors in uh, lights and fans which are connected to a central system whenever you are whenever you are entering into that room they will detect the motion and they'll switch on automatically and switch off uh, automatically these kind of things is called as internet of things this was uh, recently few years back also they asked in the upsc civil service examinations they give one example and which of the following will um, match this kind of information that is internet of things so um, what are the important points they'll give maximum about internet of things and they'll give side channels attacks also uh, the main definition is important and uh, remaining all whether it is dif difficult to detect or easy to uh, like that easy to detect they'll give few options like that with reference to side channels attack consider the following statements uh, like that they'll give few options and you have to choose the correct op correct option these are the important points in this topic 
सुषमा स्वराज अवार्ड वाई टी सी न्यूज रीसेंटली चीफ मिनिस्टर ऑफ हरियाणा मनोहर लाल खत्तर वाइल प्रेजेंटिंग द स्टेट बजट हैज अनाउंसड अ सुषमा स्वराज अवार्ड सो वॉट इज बेसिक्स अबाउट सुषमा स्वराज अवार्ड दीज आर द अवार्ड प्रेजेंटेड फॉर द वुमेन्स फॉर दिस सिग्निफिकेंट अचीवमेंट और कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन इन डिफरेंट वॉक्स ऑफ लाइफ इन नेशनल एंड इंटरनेशनल स्पीयर्स द अवार्ड विल कैरी एन मनी ऑफ रूपीज फाइव लैक्स अलॉन्ग विद कमेंडेशन इट विल बी प्रेजेंटेड बाई हरियाणा गवर्नमेंट and uh, who is sushma swaraj actually she is a law- lawyer of supreme court and as well as indian politician she is a sen- she was a senior member of bharatiya janata party she served as india's minister of external Mi- external affairs during 2014 to 2016 that is first term of narendra modi's period she was the second woman to occupy this position that means india's minister of external affairs she did a tremendous job while serving as an external minister external affairs minister and she is the second woman to occupy this position the first being indira gandhi in 1975 1977 at the age of 25 she became the youngest cabinet minister of the state of haryana she also served as delhi's fifth chief minister for a brief period in 1998 she became a delhi's first female chief minister and uh, us daily magazine that is wall street journal called her india's best loved politicians so what is the important points uh, which state government presented uh, sushma swaraj award it is uh, haryana government whether it is only for uh, national spheres or like that uh, it is both for international and national spheres and uh, if they ask about sushma so who is the first uh, uh, indian of, uh, indian minister of external affairs it is indira gandhi second is sushma swaraj and uh, first female chief minister of uh, delhi it is uh, sushma swaraj she is the youngest cabinet minister of a state that is in her in her uh, she is uh, cabinet minister at the age of 25 WHO's Global Center for Traditional Medicine why it is in news what is WHO's Global Center for Traditional Med- uh, Medicine and we'll also discuss what is traditional med- traditional medicine so first of all why it is in news recently union cabinet has approved the establishment of WHO's Global Center for Traditional Medicine by signing host country agreement between government of india and world health organization so what is WHO's GCTM the center will be established in jamnagar gujarat under ministry of aish so uh, this is the first and only global outposted center for traditional medicine across the globe so this is the first and only global outposted center so what are the benefits if they set up this global uh, uh, center for traditional medicine uh, it will position aish system across the globe it will to uh, another benefit is to ensure quality safety and efficacy accessibility and rational use for traditional medicine it is also to develop norms and standards and guidelines to develop uh, specific guidelines and training programs and also to prove uh, to provide leadership on global health matters pertaining to traditional medicine so what is traditional medicine it is it refers to any health practice approaches knowledge and beliefs incorporating plant and spiritual therapies etc to treat diagnose and prevent illness or maintain well beings so it comprises of ayush and sova rigpa so what is uh, ayush ayurveda yoga and naturopathy unani siddha and homeopathy so uh, what is unani unani is a perso arabic traditional medicine and sova rigpa is a uh, it, sova rigpa means knowledge of healing it is a tibetan medicine so important points is uh, they'll give with reference to who global center for traditional medicine consider the following statements they'll give option 1 it will be established in um, they'll give a different name other than uh, jamnagar gujarat if if it is a uh, different thing it is uh, wrong answer if we if it it will be established in jamnagar gujarat and under ministry of oish if they give ministry of health that is wrong it is under ministry of oish sometimes they'll combine the two, two statements in one option also and one side will be it will be correct and another also it will be wrong like they'll give um, it will be established in jamnagar gujarat under ministry of health then that will be wrong answer it will be established under ministry of oish and uh, second option will be the first and only global outposted center it is the first and only global outpost outposted center for traditional medicine across the globe 
these two are the important points and uh, traditional medicine is, this is for general uh, general uh, understanding Marliman Cricket Club. Why it is in news? Uh, recently, Marliman Cricket Club has announced its new code of laws to be effective from October 1st, 2022. So, what are the new laws uh, under Marliman Cricket Club? Uh, we'll see. Applying saliva to the blo uh, ball is completely banned um, irrespective of COVID situations. And now, due to COVID situations, applying uh, saliva to the ball is banned, but it will be permanently banned after even after covid situations also according to the new laws so mcc's research body so what is the what they found is uh, applying saliva to ball had little or no impact on amount of swings to the ball um, bowlers were getting so um, so what is about man cutting uh, man cutting will no, no longer be considered unfair play it will be considered as a run out so what is man cutting why why it is um, unfair play see recently uh, cricket you know cricket right um, two two fielders will be there while bowling uh, non striker if they come out of the crease and uh, bowler hits the wicket then it will be considered as first warning and if they continues if they uh, do same like hitting the wickets then it will be considered as out but according to cricket express uh, experts it is considered as unfair play so what is uh, what is the background of uh, man in 1947 indian legend bowler um, vinu mankad ran out australian wicket keeper bill brown at the non strikers end after um, duly warning him for ba backing up too far so uh, what happened uh, he again um, came out of the grease and vinu mankad ran out this bill brown so australian media doubled it as a man -cading. A name that struck in popular parlance the, this was uh, severely um, opposed by many former cricketers even uh, uh, Sunil Gavaskar also opposed the name for being disrespectful to uh, disrespectful towards Mankar and called it as Brown after Bill Brown so what is Marliman Cricket Club? Uh, it is a cricket club founded in 1787. Since 1815, I think it is based in Lord's Cricket Ground. It is a very famous cricket ground uh, uh, where uh, Ganguly uh, removed his t shirt and uh, you know you know that series, right? Uh, it is based in uh, based at London uh, Lord's Cricket Ground, and um, it is a custodian of laws of cricket. So uh, important points is Marliban Cricket Club which is the custodians of laws of cricket they will ask Marliban Cricket Club and these are all uh, just for general purpose understanding uh, uh, understanding only. So where it is uh, located it is located in Lord's Cricket Ground. Unified District Information System for Education Plus Report 2020-2021. So why it is in news? Uh, recently UDISC Report 2021 on School Education of India was recently released. So what is UDISC and its plus? So UDISC was initiated in, in the year 2012-2013. It is one of the largest management information system on school education. In this system, data was first filled in a paper format and then it is manually entered in a computer. So as this system is first manually entered in a paper and then entered in a computer, it is prone to errors and misuse. The, the data can be easily tampered. So they introduced its upgraded version UDI plus it is an upgraded version of UDI SC. So data from the school is collected online and in real time. So this is to overcome the issues present in the UDI SC system. It is developed by the De Department of School Education and Literacy in the year 2018-19. So uh, what, uh, what is the recent re uh, released its key highlights? Uh, 25 crore students enrolled in school education from primary to higher education in the year 2020-21. Uh, it is an increase of 28 lakhs enrollments as compared to uh, 28 lakhs plus has been uh, recently increased compared to 2020-2020-2019-2020. So gross enrollment ratio has improved in the 2020-2021 at all levels of the schools compared to 2019-2020. Uh, so teachers engaged in um, school education during 2020-2021 stood at 96 lakhs. 
it is an increase of 8800 teachers compared to 2019 2020 so 39.7 lakh students from private schools and government aided schools shifted to government schools in this year it is due to impact of covid-19 on education so important points they will ask few questions few uh, information like this uh, udi sc uh, they will give few with reference to udi sc uh, consider the following statement whether it is uh, data was first filled in paper and then manually entered or whether it is uh, online and re in real time and who developed udi sc report it is department of school education and literacy and they'll give few highlights whether gross enrollment ratio increased or decreased teachers engaged increased or decreased like shifting to government schools or increased or decreased like that they'll ask so the students enrolled also increased so the endurance so what is the endurance and why it is in news Ernest Shackleton's endurance ship it was found in Antarctica after 107 years so what is the endurance it is a vessel vessel means it is a ship or a large boat of antarctic antarctic explorer sir sir ernest shackleton uh, he attempted to make the first land crossing of antarctica however the ship was crushed by the sea ice and sank in 1915 so after after 100 years after 107 years to be precise the wreck of endurance what is the wreck means it is a destruction it is a cause of destruction in this case it is by sinking or it is also breaking up of uh, anything it is a, a wreck a wreck means a destruction of endurance was discovered i mean uh, the sinking ship of endurance was discovered in the weddell sea at the depth of 3000 meters Uh, who discovered the um, endurance ship it is it is the search team endurance 22 so they have found it as an in good shape uh, that means it uh, it is not destructed completely uh, something can be easily found so it is designated as a protected historic site and monument under antarctic treaty system so important points um, the who is the captain of the endurance it is um, ernest shackleton uh, he attempted to make first land crossing uh, of antarctica and it it got sank in the year 1915 and uh, who uh, at what depth it it, it is found 3000 meters national bank for financing infrastructure and development why it is in news rbi said that nabfid will be regulated and supervised as all india financial institution under rbi act 1934 so what is uh, nabfid it is a principal dfi what is dfi development financial institute for infrastructure financing this is uh, this bank this national bank is for infrastructure financing so what are dfis dfis are set up for providing long term finances for whom for risks where the risks involved are beyond the acceptable limits they'll give uh, long term long term finances for the high risk uh, way which were rejected by commercial banks and other ordinary financial institutions Uh, development financial institutions basically provide long term finances where risks are highly involved so uh, it is governed by a board of directors and a chairperson uh, these people will be appointed by the central government in consultation with rbi so what are the important points it is a principal development financial institution for infrastructure financing and it will be regulated as all india financial institutions under which act under rbi act 1934 this is important point rbi act and it will be regulated under rbi act it is important and all india financial institution is important and uh, it is a developmental financial so uh, what is development financial institution is also important as it is uh, two important points it is it is not short term financing it will give long term finance and it where less, uh, risks are less if they ask risks are less it is it is wrong it it will it is involved where risks risks are high that is beyond the acceptable limits of banks and uh, who will govern it is it is governed by board of directors and chair persons these persons will be appointed if they ask these persons will be appointed by rbi no it is wrong these persons will be appointed by central government in consultations with rbi national land monetization Corpor corporation nlmc 
so what is uh, national land monetization corporation we'll see so recently union cabinet has approved the setting up of nlmc uh, that is national land monetization corporation what is nlmc it is a wholly government of india owned company it is formed with initial authorized share capital of 5000 crores paid up capital of 150 crores so what is paid up capital it is already paid in full so 150 crores has been already paid uh, completely so it comes under uh, department of public enterprise under ministry of finance this department of public enterprise will set up this company and it acts as administrative ministry ministry of finance will act as administrative ministry and uh, what nlmc will do is it will undertake monetization of surplus land and building assets the land which is extra and building assets of of what of what institutions of central public sector enterprises uh, what are central public sector enterprises uh, for example few examples i have to tell is um, bhel that is bharat heavy electricals limited and um, coal india limited oil and natural gas corporations these are all uh, central public sector enterprises and as well as government agencies this will undertake monetization of surplus less and building assets of the cpses and government agencies it will also help carry out monetization of assets belonging to public sector firms that have closed or lined up for strategic sale so strategic sale you know right 51 is to 49 that is strategic sale and um, the government would would be able to so what will we get what will government get it will get generate substantial revenues by selling or monetizing unused or underused assets so government will appoint a chairperson to head this nlmc through a merit based selection process this is also important uh, through which uh, process they will select also uh, through recommendations through nominations like that uh, it is the it is recommended it is appointed through uh, chairpersons will be appointed through merit based selection process and also it will be also it will also hire private sector professionals with expertise in this subject so important points in this topic are it will come under ministry of finance and uh, it will monetize it will undertake monetization of which institutions central public sector enterprises and government agencies and it will uh, help carry out this closed or lined up strategic sales these are important points and uh, it is a wholly owned or uh, partially owned government of india company it is wholly owned government of india company so these are uh, the chairperson of uh, head, head of nlmc is appointed through which process it is merit based selection process Today's question of the day with reference to WHO Global Center for Traditional Medicine and WHO GCTM consider the following statements. The WHO GCTM will be established in Jamnagar under uh, Ministry of Health. Uh, this would be the first that means uh, World Health Organizations uh, GCTM will be the first and only global outposted center for traditional medicine across the globe. Uh, choose the uh, following statements and uh, write the answers in the comment section below only one on only this option is correct only this one or both uh, two are correct or these neither of these two are correct please write it write it in the comment section below uh, even if you don't know also please try to attempt it uh, so that you will remember um, for a long period thank you for watching this video guys if you have to if you have come to this far you might have liked this video please give thumbs up it will help boost um, reach this video to more people and um, if you have any queries please comment uh, please comment down in the comment section below and please share this video with your uh, fellow aspirants uh, thank you for watching guys please subscribe to this channel so that you will receive whenever i upload a video please click that bell icon also and follow us on instagram and facebook i'll post uh, current affairs daily on instagram and facebook uh, it, these are summaries of uh, and uh, i'll also post current affairs summary in telegram please follow us on telegram also i have given all links in the description below please do check out and uh, main importantly please download the pdf below this pdf is very this we this pdf will be very handy while uh, revising for this exam and you can revise this within few days that will be for the whole year you can revise this you can revise uh, within few days uh, thank you for watching guys please share this video with your friends also and uh, please don't forget to subscribe this video and 
click that bell icon thank you